social media steps in and creates this hype around, oh, we must be surrounded by a plethora of women that are going to be building us up and we must support everybody and they must support us. And it doesn't happen. And we are almost scared to say that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. almost scared to po poke holes in the fact that um, women don't genuinely support each other as much as we like to purport that we do. Is it a so there are aspects of my life um, that I will never reveal um, that are between myself, it my is. family. And we became um, and who we God. are because of that past and that history. Mm. We became strong women mm. because we know who we are. Our fundis and all of that, I mean, I heard the, the audible voice of God. It wasn't the decision. On the decision. Yeah. Yeah. That one, yeah. That graced himself. What was that about? I don't even so know. I you can't know. just trust um, the person who was able to initiate a relationship with your husband knowingly and trust them with your life, with your kid. A fancy restaurant um, in a beautiful place in South Africa. And he left you with Love them. seven Love them. foods, babe. He's not circumcised. I meant I was saying. I was saying. I mean, I already do like that Yes. Will it marry what you say you're doing? Which is... Um, I'm in a good mood. And the reason I'm in a good mood is that for once, there is no sunshine. So the weather is behaving. We can properly shoot in our garden, which you know is my favorite spot. I'm Lungelo KM, the show is Engineer Your Life. Welcome to another amazing episode. I keep emphasizing that our episodes are amazing because they are. And if you don't believe that, then why are you here? What are you watching? What are you watching for? I mean, how much data have you used to keep watching? You still listening? You st yes, that means you are here. So please like, please subscribe, and please make sure that you join as a member so that you can watch exclusive interviews um, in the membership section. You can also enjoy our full episodes, some of them unedited, because some of the things that guess say no remove that remove that but there you can see the exclusive unedited content before i get carried away let me introduce my guest her name is renee renee you'll tell me fully who you are what you're about so that everybody and uh, everybody understands um what you're here to do and what what conversation we're here to have obviously they've seen on the thumbnail and everything but i just want you to give give me a renee in a minute maybe if it's even possible because i know life is long <laughs> Well, we won't go into all the detail, but thank you for having me, Lugelo. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's Renee. Yeah. I'm from a little town in northern Italy, in Dumeni. In Dumeni, yes. Yeah, yes. So, so Dandi July is our recent <laughs> uh, offering to, to, to the nation. Yes. But um, moved to Durban in search of bigger and better things um, through a series of corporate jobs. I've landed um, creating a little bespoke agency called Blue Door Theory. Sure. And that's what I do. I create authentic conversations. Um, I dabble in a little bit of marketing. But in essence, I think I help my clients communicate more effectively with their, with their clients yeah. as well as with the people that they work with day to day. I love how you say you create authentic conversations, which is something I tell my team that I stand for so much. Um, that this, this particular platform is not a caricature of something. It's very authentic. It's very true to who we all are. Um, the, the people viewing this might have not seen my team behind be, behind the, the scenes, but we get along so much because we just relate at a human level, and it's authentic. It's authentic, and I, I, and thank you for coming here for recognizing the authenticity of the platform as well. I think also what I really admire about what you're creating here is that um, you're not dressing it up, right? So I think. Being in Women's Month, we see all these these narratives and these conversations. Sure. It's all success stories. Nobody talks about those dark days. Right. Nobody talks about how they get it wrong. Right. Um, because if you're succeeding at something, it means you've made a lot of mistakes along sure. the way. Sure. Um, and I think that's what I really wanted to share with you. I want yeah, to share the stuff yeah. that no one really wants to talk about. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Do you think you've experienced the worst pain in your life yet? Or do you think there are still bigger pains you are yet to experience? Oh, you know when you're going through it, you yeah. feel it's the worst of pain. Of course, yes, yes, um, yes. And I have some great stories, but that's a, like an easy four or five other episodes for you. <laughs> but I think in my 43 years of life, mm -hmm. um, I'm proud of my mistakes. Uh, I'm proud of the dark days because it wires you differently. Sure. It sets you up to be ready to receive the successes that are that are waiting for you on the mm -hmm. other side. Mm -hmm. Um but I also feel that I have a certain vulnerability and that's why my clients at some point become friends. Okay. 
uh, people call me an oversharer, mm -hmm. um, but it's not that. It's that I open myself up as a brand. So you're not just going to get the frilly stuff. You're going to get the stuff that's like, okay, th this is the not so nice conversations that we need to have. Um, and I think that's how you build a sustainable brand, both yeah. in yourself and, and from a business perspective. Hashtag Asiye, a movement for bold dreamers breaking boundaries, an embodiment of victory and success. You know, my Asiye moment for the year 2023 has to be the fact engineer your life has reached 1 million views. More than 1 million people have been able to grow, learn, and be inspired to do better and possibly find their own. The pain part, I wanna, I wanna dwell on that a bit. Do you think you've experienced the most painful situation in hindsight? I know when you're going through something, um, it feels like the most painful, but in hindsight, could you pinpoint one that you were like, that almost broke me. And after you've answered that, I've got a follow-up question, yeah. So it's a toss between death and divorce, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, yeah. So I'll share two stories or two, two scenarios. I think divorce is, when you're going through it, it's almost like you'll be fine, but if you lose a limb, you're not quite the same. You still function, but there's something that's slightly different from you. But you do, there's a resilience that you build up through it. I think when you bury a parent, for me, that was a defining moment. Sure. Um, my dad died in 2011 uh, from pancreatic cancer. So mm -hmm. from diagnosis to death was four months. So it was pretty quick for us to sort of navigate what was happening to us. Um, and quick may not be the best way to process, right? You know, in hindsight, I think it was better okay. because you don't watch the person suffering I that hear much. You. I hear you. Um, but also you're forced to then face the reality of the death and the finality that it comes with. Mm -hmm. Um, so in his last week or so of life, um, he had slipped into a coma, um, you know, getting ready to leave this, this realm. And the nurse said to me, sit and talk to him because the sense of hearing is almost the last to go. So he might be able to hear you. And the question is, how do you fit in a lifetime of conversations into that moment? So there was a song that I always sang to him on the way to school and I don't have uh, the best voice I don't have the <laughs> I feel I've got stage presence yeah I don't carry a tune that well and the song is I would walk 500 miles yeah. I would walk 500 mi and he hated me singing it yeah so I brought a little CD player in and I put the CD and I say CD gives away my age and um his heart rate went up just a little. And the nurse said, look, he can hear you. He's acknowledged. I said, no, he's trying to die faster. Because <laughs> it's bringing back those moments where I sang on the way to school. And, yeah. and for me, that's how I want to remember his life. Because in as much as it was probably one of the most painful losses. Sure. I feel you become an adult when you're able to bury a parent. Because my mom was dealing. I fully agree. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, because my mom was grieving. That's yeah. what she was doing. And... I was the event planner because you, you use your coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I got into full mode, planned undertakers and, and, and. And I think maybe two or three months after the funeral, you sit. And it hits you. And then it hits you. The fact that you won't have those conversations again. The fact that certain things are going to happen in your life that you're not going to be able to share. Um... In 2013, no, no, early 2014, I fell pregnant with my second child. And I cried for three days because my dad wasn't going to be there. And to reconcile something so final where all the therapy in the world doesn't, um, doesn't erase that loss. Yeah. And people say, oh, the pain, the pain goes away. No, it doesn't go away. The pain becomes familiar. So you learn to live with that pain. You learn to live with that loss. So I think for me and where I am in my life and the journey that I've gone on so far, it's, it's the loss of a parent that I feel was probably the most impactful um, and final loss. Um, and that pain revisits at certain moments. You, yeah. know, you have certain triggers. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think... The funny thing is, um, even good moments, as you as you making the reference to having your second child um, was a trigger. It made you cry. I mean, I, I can remember with myself, I lost my mother 2015 April. 
I was still in third year varsity. So I then went on to fourth year. I finished 2016. And then it was time to graduate in April 2017. When I say, obviously, I had cried between her passing till 2017. But on my graduation day, driving to my graduation, I've never cried so much in my life. Yeah. The full 30 minutes of me driving, I was bawling my eyes out because it's a happy moment. It's a wonderful day. Yes, my grandmother's there. Um, other people I love are there. But it was so final that this person who had sacrificed her whole life for me to get this first undergraduate degree is not here to experience yeah. it. So I, I, I can totally, totally relate. Yeah. Your, your follow-up question is making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, the question is then, how do you, how do you escape it stop, to stop being painful to now being a story that you're able to share like this because it has shaped your life? I think it's a balancing act, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's with everything in life. Mm -hmm. um, it's how do you choose to succumb to the pain or not? And how do you use the pain to build yourself up? And how do you use the moments that you had with that person to ultimately shape you and guide you into how you make your decisions going forward. Um, I always say that um, my dad was like a living version of the art of war, the book, um, because he was just, he seemed very, very um, calm amongst so many storms. But it was because he chose not to react first. And I think that's what I take from that pain. Um, you take moments of, of and, and, and ultimately, we only get this older in life. Um, when we're going through the moments of interacting with our parents, we always want to be right. There's that righteous indignation. I am right. You don't know what I'm going through as a teenager, as a this. But later, when that person's not there, you still have their words. Um, and so for me, that's what I use now um, to build up moments. We don't get it right all the time. Sure. You know, I say this now. It's a very eloquent answer to your mm -hmm. question. But... There's some days that, like, I just don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And and to have the self-awareness to know that you can't cope for another 12 hours, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's actually okay. Yeah. Because you've got the self-awareness to say, today uh, the reserves are low. I don't know how to sort of um, calibrate what I need to do and how I need to do it. So I'm just going to sit. So if you were a vehicle, you have the self-awareness to say, only 20 kilometers are available on the vehicle i can't take this 40, 40 kilometer trip that i'm trying to take there we go so let me pause yeah 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 and 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 i think in in the in the culture that we're in now everyone's like oh, i'm a hustle i'm a hustler yeah, yeah, i'm yeah, on the yeah. go i keep it moving on the grind. keep it moving no you can't mm -hmm. that's just not sustainable it isn't it's not it isn't. it's not truthful yeah yeah um and we almost feel that in this world of social media, if we're not posting what we've done and how we've done it and our successes and where we've been and who we've met, that we're not worth what we're doing in the realms that we're doing it in. In fact, we unknowingly, without intentionally trying to do it, you go on social media because you consume it so much. You are putting yourself under so much pressure to be always busy to the fact that you neglect your health, as you say, yeah. you neglect time to rest, and you feel guilty for resting. Exactly. Feel guilty because you've competed with other people unknowingly because they you, you perceive them showing you themselves at work all the time, them showing you themselves making an announcement of a new award they're winning, yeah. of a new public speaking gig they have, of a new song they're releasing, of a new campaign they're doing, all in one week, hey? Not remembering that this person could have shot all of these in six months, but yeah. it's being all released in one week. And you are comparing yourself unknowingly to that level of trying to be productive, but it's actually counterproductive. It's just, it's, it's, it, I go back to the fact that it's not real. Mm. Um, you know, we use social, well, at least for me, I use social media as an escape. So I don't get to dwell on my reality. I get to this voyeurism mm -hmm. uh, that it provides mm -hmm. us that we can sit in the comfort of our beds or lounges or wherever and, and have a peek into people's lives. But it's okay to be able to tell the difference. Um, and then also at the same time, and I think again this will come with age and experience, is that at some point you've got to stop comparing. Mm -hmm. 
um, comparing to each other is just it's probably the biggest demon because you neglect your own race, you yeah. neglect your own journey and your personal milestones that you need to reach. You neglect your um, purpose. Yeah. You move away from your alignment that God has brought you in this world to stay on. Yeah. You, you completely move away because you are trying to navigate another person's story, but you have no idea what their story is. And I think the, the danger is when you try to emulate that, mm -hmm. you lose sense of who you are. Um, and that's... And that's dangerous because then we'll just have this community or this or this environment of clones that are all doing the same thing, posting the same things, showing up at the same events, and no one's actually doing anything different. Yeah. No one's doing anything that's going to have a positive impact. No one's doing anything new. Um, and I think that's the danger of falling into that trap. I want to move on to two types of women that you've experienced um, through yourself and your own experiences. That are, that's what I'm trying to say by experienced. There's Renee, actually rather, let me put it this way. How does, how does the world treat Renee, the married woman, versus Renee, the divorced woman? Oh, that's so funny. I don't get invited to Briars anymore. <laughs> you don't have a husband. Um, and that's true, though. Yeah. That's the one. Th and I mean, um, I tease this couple. And I said, you know, after my divorce, I still have three meals a day. So they said, well, what do you mean? So I said, no, I've seen all the brides and you keep saying come home, but you never invite me. Mm. But you only invite couples. You know, couples that look the part, there's a husband, there's a wife, yeah. there's children. I said, I've got the, the mother and the children part, but there seems to be something that I don't fit into the societal expectation of what a family unit looks like. Sure. Um, so there's a fundamental difference. Mm -hmm. And then you asked... You alluded to the question about how do how do other women treat you? The sisterhood is nonsense, okay? Because people want to perpetuate, oh, we built each other up and we are so proud of your successes. They, people, and this is my personal experience, of yeah. course. I think there's a certain um, grouping of women that will always support you as long as you are not doing better than them. Sure. And I think, again, the older you get, the smaller your circle becomes. Because you become discerning with the people that yeah. you let into your space. Yeah. And the women that I surround myself with now are genuine. Mm -hmm. We are there for each other through thick and thin. We celebrate the successes like they are our own. Um, and there's different economic backgrounds. There's one woman in our group who has just done phenomenally well. Um, and for the sake of her anonymity, I won't mention any brands that she's in, been involved in creating. But... I mean, this woman could buy and sell all of us a good couple of times. <laughs> and when you meet her, she's the most humblest person yeah, ever. Yeah. And there's a vulnerability in the friendship and the sisterhood that we've created amongst ourselves. Um, and I think I'm blessed to have, and, and, and there's about five of them. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but again, social media steps in and creates this hype around, oh, we must be surrounded by... A plethora of women that are going to be building us up and we must support everybody and they must support us and it doesn't happen and we are almost scared to say that it doesn't happen mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. almost scared to po poke holes in the fact that um, women don't genuinely support each other as much as we like to purport that we do is it a fair expectation for women to support each other for me it seems I know this. I know this statement is nuanced, but it seems a bit silly that I must just support you on the basis of having the Being same, a woman. the same genitals. Exactly. Why is that a basis of that I must support because you? Because if life? your value system is flawed, right? I am not going to speak to you. Yeah. Right. Mm. And and we almost get shunned for saying that. It was mm -hmm. like, oh no, she's she's anti-female. She's not one of us. No, I'm not one of you because this is. These are the things you do that don't resonate with mm -hmm. my value system. Not that mine is better than yours, but I'm allowed to say I've created a filter for the people that I let in. These are my reasons for creating that filter. And if it works for me and it doesn't cause harm to anyone else, I think that's okay. It's okay to say I'm not friends with every woman that I encounter. Two days in your life that were milestones. The day you got married and the day you got divorced. I want you to draw the two mirrors as parallels and tell me what's Renee going through? What's going on in her head? How does she feel? Where is her frame of mind on the day she got married? And parallel on the day she realizes we actually need to get a divorce. Yo, Lungelo, I should have, this is an episode on its own, but 
I can sum it up like this. Don't sum it up. This is a podcast. We get <laughs> we get married for our parents. Oof. And we get divorced for ourselves. Oh. <laughs> Because this is not uh, an, an opportunity for me to slander my ex-husband. I still maintain that he's a good man. Um, but there was an alignment of us at a certain point, and, and that's when we got married. And we evolved differently in different directions. On the day that we signed our divorce papers, we went and had a bottle of champagne at the place we got engaged at. Because it was an honest journey. We were honest enough to say... It's not working. There wasn't fighting. There wasn't... Um, what is not working? I just... I, I think both of us didn't feel we could be our true selves. Next to each other. We wanted fundamentally different things. I got married when I was 24. I, 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 I'm deliberately pressing you on this because I, I don't want a person saying, um, I'm 27, I'm married, I got married at 22... I'm five years into my marriage. Um, I'm female like Renee. And right now, I'm no longer... Maybe we have one child and the child is two. But I feel like this child and this marriage has stagnated my career. Am I feeling weird by feeling that way? So that's why I want you to make an example or what fundamental differences that you felt that made you realize that we are drifting apart. You know what? So there's not going to be one sort of theory that I offer you now that's going to be applicable to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's such a fundamentally individual journey mm -hmm. that you go on to decide, do I get divorced or not? And mm -hmm. for some people, staying for the children is a very valid fact for them. And mm -hmm. they do it. Yeah. And they lead these lives that are half-lived, to be honest. Um, and they may be staying for a host of reasons. What yeah. would people think? What would people say? The money my parents spent on the wedding? All the rest of it. I think my ex-husband and I got divorced because we wanted more for ourselves. And that's not an indictment to the other person. It's a, it's a gift to ourselves. Okay. You know, um, when you are in a situation where you don't feel that you are living to your optimal level. Yeah. For, for whatever reason, you need to change something. Sure. And for some people, getting married at 24 and then staying with that person forever, that's okay. Mm -hmm. We have different levels of ambition for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have different goals for our lives. Mm -hmm. And I think what really bugged me or still bugs me about certain people getting married is like, oh, I found my other half. No, you were a whole person mm -hmm. already. Yeah. And, and um, a portioning part of your happiness and your growth and development onto another person is very dangerous. Dangerous. It, right? it, it, it's... Borderline obsessive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't... How can you make me happy? Mm -hmm. You're not going to know all of the things that I need in a particular situation. I know what I need. Mm -hmm. It's how I articulate that to my partner, to share those moments, to say, maybe you can assist here. And I, and I honestly feel the... Aha. Uh -huh. How you articulate to your partner. Do you feel perhaps what leads to divorce is we get to a point where we're no longer articulating each other to each other? You almost feel like, well, you should know. The Ish. person's not a mind reader. Yeah. You know? And they weren't born with you and lived in the same house with you and went through the same struggles you went yeah. through. Yeah. So so I think I think the construct of marriage is is a very interesting one. I still believe in the sanctity of marriage. I still feel that there is something wholesome about it. Um, whether I do it again, not quite sure. Um, but I feel that if you go into it with more life experience and more homework done up front, the, the chances of success and sustainability are far greater. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I still maintain that we get married for our families and divorced for ourselves. Um, and there's a, there's a societal pressure. Um, what would people say that if you live with somebody and not get married? Yeah. These, are, these are things that maybe from a cultural perspective, um, we're still carrying a certain amount of baggage that may not resonate with the year and the now of where we are in the world. To watch the full video, click the join button and become an Engineer Your Life member.